Hey guys, welcome back. This is Captain Orlando McGee with Nomad Fishing Charters. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about a method, a fishing method or a rigging method for your ballyhoo that you can use when you don't have live bait. This is in a very, uh, I guess you can call it an old school technique. It used to be very popular in the 1970s with bottom fishermen and fishermen fishing deep and fishing wrecks. They called it deep jigging back then. It was basically a jig and ballyhoo combination that you would work near the bottom and you'd catch very large, uh, you know, very nice bottom fish with that. Uh, since then, we've kind of like transitioned to like a lot of live bait and we still use live bait probably 90% of the time, but this is a rig you can use, especially if you like to drift fish. It's especially good with uh, drift fishing. They use it a lot on party boats where there's sometimes limited live bait or no live bait. It works very well on fish such as kingfish, bonitas, stuff like that. I've caught sailfish on it, I've caught wahoo on it, I've caught bottom fish. You never know what you're gonna catch, but it's a, it's a good rig and it's a good backup. Even when we're using the live bait, it's sometimes a good idea if you're drifting with live bait to put one of these down in, you know, in the mid water column. Uh, if you're fishing, let's say 100 feet or 120 feet of water, you might wanna drop it down 30, 40, 50 feet and just let it bob up and down with the movement of the boat. A lot of times when that jig is fluttering and going up and down, nice king or wahoo or anything will take it and you get a fish on. And it's funny because most of the time, the live bait does outfish, you know, a jig or bally or any other bait. But there are days when you will catch more fish on the jig and bally than you will on the live bait. Why that is, I don't exactly know. But I can tell you that it's a very effective method. So stand by, I'm gonna show you how to rig it. All right guys, so here we have everything we're gonna need for this. We're gonna need some jigs. Uh, these are just regular jigs you buy at the tackle shop. They can range anywhere from one ounce to two ounces. It's really gonna depend on the current and how deep you're fishing them. Uh, usually I like to use about, you know, an ounce or so, maybe an ounce and a half. Um, now when these jigs uh, come in the package, they're gonna look like this. It's just gonna be a regular jig uh, with a regular J style hook on the back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this jig. We're gonna take these trailer hooks. These particular hooks are made by Mustad. And if you can see here, you can see their open eye. I didn't open these. These actually came in the box like that. And I'll put up the model number on the screen. I don't remember it off the top of my head but I'll look it up and I'll put the, the, um, the model number on the screen for you here. Um, if you don't have, if you have a similar hook, these are, I believe five odds or six odds. If you don't have the same hook, but you have one very similar, you can modify it and open it yourself. In other words, you can take your pliers, your fishing pliers, and actually just go in there like this and just open it up. If you don't have these type of fishing pliers, you can use a pair of uh, dikes and get in there and open that up. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two of these hooks, we're gonna end up with three. You're gonna go right into the eye like so. And they're gonna be straight just like that. You can probably see it there. And then we cannot leave it like that because this will undo itself. So we gotta come in with the pliers. Again, if you don't have this type of plier, you can use any, any type of plier, anything that, that'll close it. We're just going to close off that eye like that okay that'll make it secure you don't want to tighten it too much you want to leave some play so when you hook a nice fish this has some play to it and it's not stiff and tearing out or coming undone then you're going to take your jig and you're going to put it through this one just like you did the other and it should all be nice and straight we're also going to go in there and tighten that eye we're going to remove all that mylar so that we don't damage the jig. We'll let the fish do that. And then we're gonna tighten it real good. Now let me do it once more, give it another little push there. All right, that's good enough. Nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. I, I like to rig this with um, like a leader, a monofilament leader, or it could be fluorocarbon if you like. I would use anywhere from 40 to 60 pound test with 50 being ideal. Uh, if you're using fluorocarbon, you can probably get by with 40 since it's a little stiffer, a little stronger. Uh, and then I'll tie about three to four feet of uh, leader. 
with a small barrel swivel to my double line okay and like i said earlier once you uh put a ballyhoo on this um you're gonna you know pitch it over the side either with a conventional reel or a spinning reel it doesn't really matter you can use anywhere from like 15 i wouldn't use any more than like 30 pound tests 20 would probably be ideal and you're gonna i like to fish them with the rod in the holder unless you're over structure or something but if you're just drifting along i like to put the rod in the holder and let the jig just move up and down with the bobbing of the boat a lot of times when that jig is fluttering like that fish will come up and whack it okay so with that said let me get a ballyhoo here and we'll uh we'll show you how to attach it to the ballyhoo all right here you have one that i had already rigged and as you can see it's pretty straight we want to get it as straight as possible some people like to place their hooks on the on the belly side of the ballyhoo like so uh, but i find that this belly side is a lot weaker and it's not as strong and the, the hooks tend to rip out a little easier when it's on the back side like this um they seem to hold up better the other thing too is some some of you may ask uh, well if you're going to catch kings on this shouldn't we be using wire the answer is no uh, when you use wire a lot of times you may not get as many bites and also that's the reason why we're using the three hooks the, the hooks are basically doing the job of the wire since kingfish are typically uh, short strikers they like to uh, bite fish you know near the tail most of the time you'll get your fish on this last hook occasionally if they're really hungry you may catch them on one of the top hooks but most of the time this is the hook here that's going to do the damage okay so you don't have to worry too much about getting cut off unless the bite is red hot and another fish may come and try to eat the jig itself the bear jig but most of the time that's not a problem okay i'm going to show you how to go ahead and hook these we're going to take our ballyhoo this is a very large ballyhoo i normally like to use like mediums this one's on the bigger side it's probably a foot long uh, ideal size for a ballyhoo would probably be about 10 inches first thing i'm always going to do when i'm fishing a ballyhoo is i like to break the beak leave on about maybe three eighths to half inch on there just enough so that we don't break the mouth we need that mouth intact and we need this bottom side here intact so i like to break a little bit off and some people will ask why do you break the beak well the reason i break the beak is because when the beak's on there it tends to wrap around the line and it'll cause the bait to uh, spin and you know in the water and create problems. We don't, we never want your bait to spin. You always want your bait as streamlined and as straight as possible. Now, with that said, first thing we're going to do when we're rigging the bait is we're going to take the rig and we're going to measure it out, okay? And if you notice, let me move this mylar aside. That first hook should be right around the back of the mouth okay the inside part of the mouth that's where I want that hook going I'm actually want it right up here right in front of the eyes this spot I'll show you right there that's kind of where I want my hook I want that tough part of the mouth right above the mouth okay so with that said I'm gonna measure it out I'm gonna find my spot then I'm gonna find my spot back here now that's where my finger is located that's where that hook needs to go in somewhere in that area I'm usually going to go a little just shy of that spot i'm going to find the center of the valley and i'm going to try to go down as straight as possible it's never going to be perfect you know it's always going to move off maybe due to the scales or what have you the backbone the hook is always going to move a little bit that's okay get it as straight as you can once you got it in there real good we're going to take the second hook and with the hook angled straight down we're going to go straight down same thing looking for that backbone go right next to the backbone or right over it and then we're going to put in that final hook see how it's lined up here right in front of the head we want that nice hard part of the head so we're going to go through there and back around okay this hook is a little smaller than i like but it'll work just the same it's on there you can see the tip protruding there most of the time it's not this hook that's going to catch your fish anyway it's those last two hooks okay so there you have it that's your rig right there okay now remember you can jig this with your hand especially if you're you can hold a rod and jig it over deep 
structure, stuff like that, for amberjack, snapper, grouper, anything like that, we'll eat it. Uh, me personally, I like to fish them in the rod holder and just let, let the rod holder do the work. Most of the time, the rod will just double over and you'll have a fish on. This is a great rig to use when you don't have live bait and, um, and you need a backup plan. There's also some times when this bait outfishes the, uh, the live bait. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. This is something you could add to your arsenal and make you a better fisherman. Until next time, my name is Captain Orlando Muniz with Nomad Fishing Charters.